Hi everyone, I'm Tom Donnelly and welcome back to the Vinyl Hive channel. A very special showcase today, because as you may know, I am a big Depeche Mode collector, which you may have seen from the Vinyl Hive Instagram account and from the title of this video. So instead of doing a showcase, uh, which I will normally do, which will consist of me showing all the records I have of one artist usually, um, because I have so much of Depeche Mode, I'm going to do a, an episode per album and then also do some bits and bobs here and there for a, a special video because there is a lot in my collection as you will come to know. But that is for the future and today we start with their debut album Speak and Spell released October 5th 1981. Uh, when I was preparing for this video, uh, I thought this was the least collected uh, album that I have, uh, but turns out I was wrong, as I sometimes am. And I actually have nine items in total, and we are starting with the copies of the albums themselves. So here we have the LP version, uh, this was the first record I purchased from Discogs, uh, so therefore it is one of the earliest to arrive in my collection. Mm -hmm. It's fairly battered as you can see, um, which is because I didn't understand the grading system back then, uh, but I still love it. And as it starts my Depeche Mode collection, it will always have a special place in my collection. Okay, so a bit on the album itself. As previously mentioned, this is their debut album, uh, but it isn't really a proper Depeche Mode album for a multitude of reasons. Most notably of those reasons uh, is Vince Clark, who left the band a month uh, after this album came out, actually. Uh, and then he went on to be in Yazoo and Eurasia. Uh, he's been in Eurasia from 1985 to present. Uh, he was lead songwriter on this album, and ever since Matt and Gore has been the lead songwriter on the Depeche Mode albums. As a result, this album is arguably more poppy uh, than subsequent entries. Um, which is why Vince Clark left the band as he wanted to do pop music uh, but the rest of the band wanted to go down a dark route which uh, both uh, artists have subsequently gone down and have created uh, wonderful careers on those paths which is good for them. Right, back to the collection. I don't have just one LP, I have two. And this one is incredible. It's still mainly in shrink wrapping, uh, which it has been for almost 40 whole years. That is a long time. Uh, it always shocks me when I see old records uh, still in the shrink wrapping, as you may know. Uh, you go to a record store and all the old records are just in their plain cardboard sleeves. There's no, uh, well, they have extra protective sleeves, but no shrink wrapping usually. Um, and it's hard to imagine that they really ever did come in shrink wrapping like this, but here we are, and there's proof. Another shocking detail is that this record, when it first came out, was only on sale for three pounds sixty nine pence, uh, which is crazy. And even with inflation, that would be about thirteen pounds today. And a new record costs around twenty pound minimum. So make of that as you will, because I know I will. Ooh, you're hard, showing off. I personally haven't played this copy yet. This is uh, mainly for the collectible aspect of it. Previous record, uh, this is the one that gets played uh, because I just want to keep this one as pristine as possible, really. Okay, to wrap up the album items, we have this cassette. I have a few cassettes, mostly of Depeche Mode, to be fair. Uh, and I suppose a poignant fact about this one in particular is that it was the first item to arrive at this house that I am in right now. Wow. Okay, we are going to go on to the singles now, uh, but an album track worth mentioning is Torah, Torah, Torah. It is my favorite album track, uh, and on its day is my favorite track from the whole album. Interestingly, this is the only song on the album uh, written by Martin Gore. Uh, it's not, uh, he's not credited for it on the sleeve, uh, but according to Genius, he did write the song, so blame them, not me, please. It's based on the 1970 film of the same name, which depicts the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. The lyrics appear to be as if they are a hybrid between film and real events. As the one lyric says, uh, I played an American, referencing, you know, playing an American in a film. 
whilst also containing lyrics uh, which say that they were raining from the sky, uh, which would uh, allude to the kamikaze pilots. Um, so a very interesting song indeed, check it out. Okay, so I've shown you some cool items there, and now we're going to get into the singles. And first up we have an extremely cool item, which is this, the Flexi Pop Flexi Disc for the song Sometimes I Wish I Was Dead. This is one of only three flexi discs that Depeche Mode did to my knowledge, and it is probably the coolest one. It's on a red flexi vinyl, which are notoriously poor in quality and in audio quality, uh, but work well as a gimmick as this came with the Flexi Pop magazine, where coming with flexi vinyls, uh, the gimmick of really. It actually features a different uh, version of the song, uh, which isn't found on the album. And um, this is technically the last single released, if you can call it a single release, but it was the first one to be released after the album actually came out. So I put it first due to its uniqueness from the rest. Now, normality isn't fully back yet with this record. This is the first single from Speak and Spell, released February 20th, 1981, which doesn't actually feature on the album. And this isn't the first time that a great Depeche Mode song hasn't featured on the album uh, that it's come out around, uh, but that issue is for another video. As of late, Dreaming of Me is one of my favorite tunes at the moment, and the B-side Ice Machine is also really good. So it is interesting that it didn't actually go on the album. Uh, it might have featured on other territories and uh, copies. I don't know. Let me know in the comments section below. Uh, the record itself is actually a little rarer than other 7-inch singles from this time, uh, probably because they weren't uh, as known as this was the first single, so not many were made uh, even for 1981 when singles were in abundance. Tasty facts about this one is that 30 years after its release in 2011, uh, devotees around the world uh, rallied together to try and get this song back into the charts, which failed. Uh, miserably. Apart from in Germany, where it actually got up to 45 in, in the album's charts. Uh, so good going for them. Moving a few months now to the 29th of May 1981 with the opening track to the album, New Life. Another great track here, however this doesn't really uh, stand out or impress me as much as uh, the other singles do, but it does feature a great B-side which is called Shout. It's ironic in its naming because the vocals are deliberately uh, quiet uh, for whatever reason. It's quite annoying because I actually like the song, but it's barely listenable too. But that's just how I'm in pack. I also have the 12 inch single, uh, which features a baby that you may recognize from the 1983 Born Again album by Black Sabbath. The only information I can find out about this baby is that it was taken from a 1968 uh, magazine. So if you know where this baby came from, let me know in the comment section below. Oh. Nothing too special about this specific record, apart from the fact it features different mixes of the songs, um, which 12-inch singles usually do. Now they and I have saved the best to last, as on September the 7th, 1981, they released this, the iconic Just Can't Get Enough. This is probably the Depeche Mode song that you'll know, uh, whether you knew it was by Depeche Mode or not. Uh, it reached number eight in the UK charts uh, and has since been in popular culture for almost 40 whole years. Uh, most notably used in sport, uh, being adapted by fans uh, for chants. The uh, mayor of London, Sadiq Khan's Labour Party also uses uh, this song, a uh, promotion for Sadiq Khan, with the hilarious play on words with I just can't get enough. I also have the 12-inch single, this one being an unyeared version on Discogs, but it's most likely from 1981 as well. It has a very nice version of the song, uh, the Schizo Mix, uh, which features a sinister interlude, uh, I guess, a nod in the direction of where the band wanted to go. Well, there you go. Part one of, I imagine, many uh, showcasing uh, my Depeche Mode collection. This album, for me personally, is a great album and is often overlooked by Depeche Mode fans, mainly because of previously mentioned differences from every other album, really. Music-wise, even their second album took darker roots. So this is a unique entry into their discography. As a lover of synth pop, it has a place for me personally and is definitely worth checking out. I hope you enjoyed and have learned something and hopefully I've inspired you to check out Depeche Mode or this album if you haven't already, which is a great thing. One of many great things that come when you subscribe to The Hive.
please subscribe. Uh, as always, Discogs links to all these records will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, uh, and comment any suggestions or recommendations that you have. I love to hear from you. See you next time. Bye bye.